Yeah. 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 There's a lot of them. Let's go.
amen, through every storm that is with us, amen, through the good and the bad, hallelujah. So let's go before God this evening, contending, amen, for needs, amen, that are in our hearts, amen, that are in our lives. Let's ask, amen, for God just to move upon our friends and family, our co-workers, amen, that are in need of salvation, that don't know Jesus as we do, amen, that are needing peace, amen. Many times we can see as they talk or as they go about their day, amen, that there's something missing, and that is Jesus Christ. Let's contend, amen, for their salvation, for healing, amen. Let's pray, amen, for those that are sick in body, that God would just move and uh, upon their hearts and minds, amen, that God just heal them, amen, moving in the supernatural uh, special request. Let's pray for the Hunter family and for Kill family, amen, they were just on my heart today. Uh, they had a family members pass away, so we need to pray and contend, amen, for God just to help them uh, still in this time of mourning, amen, and figuring out what to do, hallelujah. Let's also be praying, as always, amen, for our mother church, we cannot forget them. They are such a blessing. Let's pray for Pastor Sean, Sister Julie, amen, and uh, God helping them and leading that congregation, especially to this unprecedented time, and also be praying for me and my wife, amen, that God will just help us, amen, in doing what God wants us to do during this time. Also, let's be praying, amen, for our country. In all reality, we know we need to pray for the whole world, every single nation and country, amen, that has been affected by this virus. Let's believe God for God just to help us through this, that his will be done most of all, and that we realize, amen, what we need to learn from this, what we need to contend for. And as I've been reading and seeing a lot of posts, amen, of not taking things for granted, there's a lot of things that once this quarantine is lifted, people are going to want to go back to, and that they took for granted, amen, and that they would keep that in their minds, amen, every single day, every single hour, every single year. So let's pray for one another. Let's pray for each other's families. Um, just those, amen, that might uh, just be by themselves, just personally, maybe not have family, but uh, we want to say here at the door, we're here for you. So please call, comment, amen, if you're needing prayer, needing help, amen, we'd love to help you, talk with you, amen, encourage you in the word of God. And so let's go before God this evening, and as prayer subsides, I'm going to ask Brother Ken once again to pray, amen, to open us up in this service. So let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks to you, Lord, my God, Lord, for all that you're doing. We thank you, Lord, for your anointing, your presence. We ask, my God, for you to move supernaturally, my God, Lord, that your hand will go out before us, my God, touching lives, my God, that are sick in body, Lord, that are in need of salvation, that have a special need, Lord. We just come to you tonight. Hallelujah. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening, God, that we can come to you and we can learn from you, God, what it is you're trying to teach us through this sermon and through this time. Through this very season we're in, God, I just pray that we would abide in you fully, God, that we would just be devoted to you, sold out for Jesus. I just pray that you would help us get there, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'd like to once again welcome you to the door. Church, amen, here on the northwest side of Oklahoma City. I'd like to welcome you out. Amen. Appreciate you guys uh, joining us. <clears throat> We do have a few announcements, amen, once again, let's not forget, on Wednesday, our regular service, service starts at 7, so we usually try to start about 5 minutes before, so uh, tune in, amen, so that you can be ready and prepared to receive what God has for that evening, hallelujah, and then um, Monday night, we are going to try to do the music Monday, so that'll be at 7 o'clock, and then uh, just be praying for the rest of the week for Freedom Fridays and Skillful Saturdays. That's all I can ask of you is just pray and help us, amen, in getting those situated and uh, online and live streaming, amen. So that is all the announcements, amen. Let's take up the offering. Brother Ken did an excellent job this morning, amen, and he's only going to get better. But I do want to say, even though we are live streaming and we're not doing as much on the ground, amen, our vision and our purpose has not changed. And so we still need to give into the kingdom of God and still reach in the loss, amen. We have been looking into things to make our live stream better, but it costs money. And so that is one of the things we do want to have our offerings go towards is uh, buying those things, but most of all, amen, just being there to reach the lost, being there for those that are in need, because this is going to be uh, 
it already is a rough time for a few people and it just might get worse. And so we want to be there, but God has placed a few of us, amen, even if you're listening on the live stream, where he's placed you in a, in a season of plenty. Mm -hmm. And God placed you in that season of plenty so that you can give back. Yes. Because God is the one that gave us the ability, amen, that gave us the amount, hallelujah. And so I just want to encourage you, amen, be obedient to God. Because he is faithful and just as I preached this morning, you know, we can confess so many times. I've heard so many testimonies about how God has came through, how God has helped, how God has always been faithful right on time, even though we thought he was late. Mm -hmm. But then he, we come to find out he was just right on time. And so he's always faithful. So let's be faithful back knowing that God's going to give, he's going to supply, he's going to provide. Amen. But we got to seek him. We got to put him first. Amen. So let's give hallelujah as Brother Ken uh, prays for the offering. Lord, Holy Father, we thank you for those you have given us, God, and the ability to give back to you, Lord. So I pray as we do that, as we sow into your kingdom, Lord, that you would bless the gift and bless the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We lift you up and we glorify your holy name. You are worthy. Hallelujah. I do want to express a thank you to those, amen, that have been faithfully giving uh, in one of, of the four formats. Hallelujah. It truly is a blessing, and we truly thank you. Amen. We do, I do not take that lightly. I contend, amen, to be a good steward. I strive for the spirit of excellence, amen, in doing God's will. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles this evening, amen, once again, it's one scripture as my main text. Job 19.25, but I do want to start off with a story. This following illustration uh, is a story by uh, Charles Spurgeon. There is a young girl in heaven now, once a member of this church. I went with one of my beloved deacons to see her when she was very near her departure. She was in the last stage of tuberculosis. Fair and sweetly beautiful she looked, and I think I've never heard such syllables as those which fell from that girl's lips. She had had disappointments and trials and troubles, but all these she had not a word to say about, except that she blessed God for them. They had brought her nearer to her Savior, and when we asked her whether she was not afraid of dying, no, she said. The only thing I fear is this. I'm afraid of living lest my patience should wear out. I have not said an impatient word yet, sir. I hope I shall not. It is sad to be so very weak, but I think if I had my choice, I would rather be here than be in good health, for it is very precious to me. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I am waiting for the moment when he shall send his chair to fire to take me up to him. I put the question, have you any doubts? No, none, sir. Why should I? I clasp my arms around the neck of Christ. And have you not any fear about your sins? No, sir. They are all forgiven. I trust the Savior's precious blood and do you think that you will be as brave as this when you come actually to die not if he leaves me sir but he will never leave me for he said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee in Job 19 25 says for I know that my redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. I want to preach a sermon I have titled My Redeemer Lives. According to Strong's Concordance, the Hebrew word for Redeemer is Gaul, which means to redeem, act as a kinsman, a kinsman, a kinsman, redeemer, avenge, revenge, ransom, do the part of a kinsman. To redeem from slavery, to redeem land, to exact re uh, vengeance, to redeem by payment, to redeem 
with God as the subject, and to redeem individuals from death. See, as I read this story this evening, one of the things that comforted this young lady was that she knew that her Redeemer lives. So the first thing I want to look at this evening is alive. See, we are made by a living God. So we are saved by a living Redeemer who is both almighty and eternal and is therefore able to save to the utmost. See, one of the contrary things is that we know that our body, that our flesh, that we are dying. But one thing that we can take comfort in is that he lives and assures us that because he lives, we shall live also. Revelation 1, verse 18 says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. See, we can take comfort even though things are crazy all around us. We can really take comfort. Not only, you know, how we push people towards Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ can save you, Jesus Christ can help you. But we can take comfort and hope in is that he's alive. Yes, amen. I understand this is, I guess, what you would call Passover week or, you know, I believe next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And so this is a very fitting portion of scripture. This is a very fitting sermon because we need, even though we are going towards the cross, we need to look past the cross towards his resurrection and have this understanding is that we have a hope in a God and a redeemer that is alive and well, not some statue. Right. Not some inanimate thing that cannot help you other than maybe standing before it or maybe rubbing its belly for good luck, which <laughs> that doesn't even work. But we have help that is alive and well. And on top of that is a warrior. On top of that is somebody that can conquer, that can actually do something. You ever see somebody that's going in to fight and you're like, uh, are you sure you want to do this? Or how come is it in the big, like in the gangs, you know, it's the smallest person that has the biggest mouth, gets everybody in trouble, but can't fight worth the lick. He's the great and mighty warrior. He's the great savior. He's the redeemer. He is the one who lives. And the great thing is he used to be dead. But by the power of God, he was risen up. And so in looking at that, when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, he becomes your Redeemer. This is why in prayer we are contending for those that don't know God as we do. That don't know Jesus as we do because they don't have a Redeemer right now. Right. They don't have the help. They don't have that strong arm, that helping hand that we so desperately need in this time. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he wipes your sins away. Once again, in my illustration, my opening story, Charles Spurgeon had asked, do you have any fear about your sins? And she says, no, sir, all have been forgiven. See, when Jesus becomes your Savior, you begin new in him you have a, re a fresh start in Jesus Christ Amen. when you surrender to Christ you know that, that surrender is an, is an action word and I've never seen anybody surrender to an inanimate object to an idol you don't see a statue saying freeze and you stop you don't surrender over your things to something that cannot harm you. Mm. I truly believe this is why people like gods that have mm. no power. Oh, amen. Because they have power over it. Which, in all reality, it ends in destruction, especially with money and all these 
things that if you don't know how to control it, if you don't allow God to help you in your life, it will bring you to ruin. When you surrender to Christ, he redeems you from the sins of your past. Well, that is great hope, saints of God. The blood of Jesus Christ has purchased your sin. His blood frees you from the imprisonment of sin. He becomes your redeemer when you surrender. In Job 16, 19, Surely even now my witness is in heaven and my evidence is on high. This is talking about once again an alive and well redeemer. See, Job is talking, saying that my witness is in heaven, the one that can speak on my behalf, the one that knows. This is why it's a very uh, trial thing whenever there's a witness for a case and they're a key witness. And then all of a sudden they show up dead. If you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, if you have given your heart to him, now your witness is in heaven. And your evidence, amen, is on high. Your evidence is Jesus Christ himself that will be laid before the judgment saying that you are righteous because of Christ. See, we should be jumping for joy because Jesus Christ lives. Amen. You know, if he did not live, if he did not resurrect, you know, Christianity would be dead in the water. Because mm -hmm. there's no power. If Jesus couldn't conquer over death, then when we die, there is no resurrection. There is no life. But Jesus is alive. He is not a dead, deaf, or dumb idol. He's alive. One thing I'd like to point out, he is a living refuge. The reason I say he's a living free, he is your vindicator. As I was doing some studying, and it's one of the commentators said he's your vindicator. And I actually had to look that up. I had an understanding of uh, vindicator, but you know, I, I really like definitions. A vindicator is a person who frees someone from allegation or blame by providing. Just as she jumps in, saves this little boy from drowning because she was attentive. Can I tell you that lifesaver tube or whatever you want to call it, that sitting on the wall at a pool cannot jump in and save you. Right. It has to be alive. So this should prompt us not to go back into the world of sin to not be entangled again because I guarantee that little boy either he learned how to swim really well or he doesn't go back into the water and we should do one of the two we need to learn from our mistakes can you say amen, amen. we need to understand that God is there for us Jeremiah 15, 21 declares, and I will deliver thee out of the hand of the wicked, and I will redeem thee out of the hand of the terrible. What I get from these scriptures is like, you know what, we're going to be in the midst of these things. It does not ever say that I will just not let terrible come to you. It does not say that I will not let the wicked come around you. No, it says I will deliver you from it. And as I've read the Bible and seen it, he helps you through it so that you learn and realize. And even like now, don't take things for granted. Right. Because you never know when it will be gone. This is why God says, this is why the Bible says our, our lives are like a vapor of smoke. Here one second, gone the next. There's a lot of people that took their time for granted 
took outside being outside, playing on the playground. And now they're all ticked off because we can't what? I can't go here. I can't go there. I'm not an essential employee. But see, we can always fall back on the Redeemer lifts. Amen. There is nothing too hard for God. He will deliver you from anything the enemy throws at you. But as I'm saying this line, I'm thinking, you know what? You've got to be on the right side. Right. Because I see so many people, they're, they're standing with the enemy throwing things. Trying to get by, trying to fit in, yet they're in with the enemy. No, to get it done right, to be fully redeemed, you need to be on the right side. Amen. You need to ask Jesus Christ into your heart. You need to allow him to be your redeemer, your vindicator. Right. So that means switching sides from the world to the godly kingdom and saying, I stand with Jesus. Yes, amen. And he'll look down and be like, aim straight. And then he'll fight for you. See, his arm is stronger than the struggle that is trying to grip you and I. His arm can pull you out of any pit, any despair. Even if you do get entangled once again in the bondage of the past. He can still pull you out of the past. He can still pull you out of harm's way. Last thing I want to look at this morning is by his word. He is our redeemer. Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. As I was putting this sermon together, I couldn't help but think about this morning. These were two separate sermons that I'd done separately. But see, God also follows his own rules. Yes. If he wants you to confess, he will confess also. <clears throat> God sent down Jesus as a man. God in the flesh. But what did Jesus do? He confessed that he was cured by his father's power. He was doing his father's work. He was doing his father's bidding. And he led everybody to God through him. Saying, I am of the father and the father is of me. And even in this point in time, this portion of scripture is right in the midst of temptation. Right in the midst. This is where the devil took him up. And was trying to tempt him. Into going against his father's words. And this is what he says to Satan. He said it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. See Jesus is the mouth of God. The Bible is the mouth of God. Is the words. We can see through these words, through this instructional book, yes. that our Redeemer is alive. Because his word said so. Amen. And then you know what? His actions back it up. Yes. So we need to choose to live by the word of God. There's so many people that are like, oh yeah, I know the Bible. I know, you know, I know kind of what it says. But we don't choose to live by it. We'd rather live by Words of Confucius. And I'm sorry, but that sounds too close to confusion. Mm -hmm. they rather have some scratch it off thingy that's like, okay, one, two, three, and whatever you scratch off, that's, that's what's going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? We need to pattern our lives after God's word in every area of our lives. I know this is, this is another thing that's kind of been a reoccurring theme or a reoccurring subject in my sermons here lately. It's choosing to pattern our lives after the word of God. I think I said it last Sunday. 
Man, the world would be a better place if we would just follow some of the simple rules in the Bible, not even containing to salvation, but if we would just love people. Amen. If we love people as we love ourselves, if we would consider people, if we wouldn't look down on them, if we would put us ourselves on a pedestal, this world would be a better place. But that doesn't happen because we forget the first rule. Love God with all your heart. Yes. He didn't say yourself. Yes, I understand you need, to, you need to love yourself. There needs to be some component of loving yourself or you're just going to destroy yourself for everybody. But when you love God and you love God with all your heart, then you're going to take care of yourself and you're going to take care of those that are around you. This is what the word of God says. We need to apply the living word of God daily. Luke 20, verse 38 says, For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living for all who live unto him. Unto him is once again that same thing, abiding in him, following after him, putting him as authority, letting him be Lord of your life. And even tonight, letting him be redeemer. Let him, let him be protector. Let him be vindicator. Let him be... Who he says he is. Amen. Instead of trying to take it away and give you that glory. Give you that credit. I'm a self-made man. Really? Were you able to breathe life into your own lungs? See, Jesus is not a God of the dead, but of the living. So once again, we need to let his living word breathe through every area of our lives. I know some of you guys are, as you're listening to this, you can see some areas that are dying mm -hmm. in your life. Now there's hope. Mm -hmm. Let him redeem that area. Amen. Let him breathe life. Let his word guide your heart and lead your family. One thing that I'm always reminded about the word of God so many times the word of God is represented by the sword of the spirit or is the sword of the spirit. Did you know that that's the only offensive weapon in the Christian armor? Mm. Ephesians 6, 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. See, when you allow the sword of the spirit to go before you, that is your vindication. Because once again, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. That's the word of God. Slicing those blood ties. Yes. Slicing those chains. Amen. I used to love some of those Chinese movies and stuff where they talk about this certain still made by this certain uh, martial arts warrior that no matter what to go, whatever it comes against, it will cut right through. Four inches of steel, cut right through. That's the word of God. I truly believe that's probably a concept that came from the Bible. Yes. This sword that is so powerful that it cuts through anything. We need to let his blood cover every aspect of our life. We need his word to cover our private and our public life. You know, because our Savior, Jesus Christ, is living, his word will redeem you. Now, earlier I stated about Job talking about his witness. So this falls in that same ramification that because he's living... His words about you. See, the devil is, is, is always accusing. The Bible talks about where he goes to and fro and he accuses the brethren. And even at times he comes up there and says, you know what? So and so. I'm going to go ahead and use some of our people. He says, that can, he ain't no good. <laughs> you claim that he's yours. <laughs> did you see what he did last week? Did you see how he talked to his wife? <laughs> He ain't yours. 
But Jesus says, I don't care what you say. He has given his life to me. Yes. See, his words speak redemption. His words speak life back into Brother Ken. Saying he's mine, not yours. Devil, you have no right. Amen. See, his word will wash your heart when you confess those things. And God, I need help. God, I am sinning. God, I have this struggle. You seek God. Ask for forgiveness, and it washes your heart. And then as you wash your heart, it is made brand new. His word, his blood, his word will make you whole. <laughs> See, if Jesus or if God can speak and form man out of the ground, you know, the holes in your heart are the empty spaces he can fill with just his words. Amen. He'll make you whole. We need to surrender to his word. We need to surrender to his heart, to surrender to his blood. His word will redeem us from death and destruction. <coughs> I've read countless scriptures that talk about his word will redeem us from the hand of the enemy. He is our vindicator. And just how crazy and wild my imagination is. That's what I say. I see a huge warrior greater than Thor, greater than the Hulk, greater than these superheroes that we're so adamant about. One that can't be destroyed. One that has no weaknesses at all. Because he stands upon his word. He stands upon the authority that God gave him. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. But as I said this morning, it comes down to the point of that we need to choose to be restored in Christ. Right. Amen. We need to choose to listen to his words. I want to read the last portion of my opening story once again. This young lady says, I know that my Redeemer lives. And I am waiting for the moment when he shall send his chariot of fire to take me up to him. Charles Spurgeon put to the question, have you any doubts? She says, no, none, sir. Why should I? Look at this picture. She says, why should I? I clasp my arms around the neck of Christ. I've never had somebody save me from like a car wreck or from a fire, but I've seen the stories, I've seen the videos, and I've even heard people tell me about how grateful they are to that person, that firefighter, mm -hmm. that nurse, that doctor. You see this picture is that she clasps her arms around the neck of Christ because she sees him as more than just a teacher. Right. More than just a prophet. Mm -hmm. But a hero, a savior, a redeemer, a vindicator. And then Charles Spurgeon goes on to say, and have you any fear about your sins? She says, no, sir, they are all forgiven. She says some key words right here. I trust the Savior's precious blood. If you notice throughout the sermon, every once in a while I would change some of my words to blood. Mm -hmm. Instead of his word, I say his blood. Instead of his arm, his blood. Mm -hmm. Because she trusted it. Yes, amen. And the last question he asked this young lady, and he says, do you think that you will be as brave as this when you actually come to die? She says, not if he leaves me, sir. But then she says, but he will never leave me, for he said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. That is in Hebrews 
13.5. Once again, referencing the word of God. Amen. This is why we have hope of those that have passed away or those that become sick. Because you know what? If God sees fit to heal them, glory to God, he healed them. But if he takes them home and they are right with God, Oh, man, that's even more glorious because now they're in eternity. Now they have a new body. Now there's no more tears, no more crying. But they only have this hope because they can call him Redeemer. Amen. And even more so, my Redeemer. Yes, amen. So the question to you tonight is, is he your Redeemer? Or is that just a title for somebody else? Oh, you know, that, that's all. Oh, that's uh, some of the Redeemer. Mm -hmm. I know about Jesus. Yeah, I, I've heard from her. He sounds like a really good guy. Do you know Jesus? Oh, yeah, I heard about, you know, my, my mom and dad always talked about him. Yeah, that, that was their redeemer. But what about you? See, even us that are sitting in church many times, we know the stories. We know when to lift our hands. We know when to praise God, when to clap, when to say God is good, when to say <laughs> those righteous sayings, those church sayings. Mm -hmm. You know when to lay it all out. But is he truly your redeemer? I'm going back to what I said this morning. We need to confess. We need to be true with ourselves. If we don't allow God to save us, how can he? If we don't choose to trust him, how can he help us? The thing is, he's going to keep bringing people to preach his love. He's going to keep bringing people in situation to show you himself. But you must choose him. And this young lady in my story had nothing to worry about. And you can see from her responses. She says, I know my Redeemer lives. It's not some dread, dead and dry thing. It's not some dead, dry religion. It's something out of life. She says, I know in my heart of hearts that my Redeemer lives, so he's able to go before me. Amen. See, this is one of the reasons why we have power of attorney. This is why we have wills. It's so that those who are living can take over. And so when our flesh dies or when this body dies, who's going to take over for you? Who's going to reach down and say or be the witness saying when the devil comes and tries to take you? Oh, no, this is mine. Mm -hmm. Can Jesus say that to you or for you? See, our text, Job 19.25 says, For I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. That's believing and knowing, saying, you know what? He will rise. He will manifest himself when he needs to. He mm -hmm. will stand on the earth because I know my Redeemer lives. Do you know him tonight? Like I have every head bowed and every eye closed. My Redeemer lives. There's actually a bunch of other things that I can go into about the kinsmen. Uh, kinsmen. But it wasn't really necessary tonight. The Hebrew word for redeemer, gall, one of the last definitions was to redeem individuals from death. Eternal death is what we're talking about. He paid the price for you and I. And this should give us hope. This should bring joy this should bring encouragement this should bring life into our own lives tonight amen Sing a song, show me your ways, and 
God wants to show you his ways. Then we also sing a song, amen, about the worthy lamb. See, he's a worthy redeemer. Who's alive and well, and he's sitting at the right hand of God, ready to be a witness for you as long as you put him as authority in your life, as you put him in that place of redeemer. in Revelation song it says you are my everything and I will adore you is he your everything if you can't say that tonight if you don't know Jesus but you want to you need to say this prayer a simple prayer but this is just the beginning once again maybe you're a bachelor and you need to re uh, rededicate your life you have fallen away. You have went back into the world. You made decisions that took you out of the will of God. God still loves you. God still cares about you. The Bible even says he's married to the backslider where his arm is always open to you. And if that's you this evening, don't know Jesus, so you need to rededicate. Once you repeat this after me, say, Dear Jesus, I repent. Forgive me of my sins. I put you as authority over my life. I put you as my king and my everything. In Jesus' name, amen. See, that's just the beginning. So if you said that prayer once again, please call us, please uh, message us. We want to be there for you. If you have questions, Especially the question is, where do I go from here? What do I do now? Then you need to call. You need to comment. You need to message us. But now moving right along, saints of God. Do you have the trust of this young lady as I read this tonight, this young girl? Do you truly believe in your Redeemer? Do you truly, solely, and trust in your Savior's blood that he that it can save you that it can wash you that it can be there for you because it's alive and well your Redeemer is he your Redeemer do you believe he will manifest himself when the time comes when it's needed and if not then maybe there's some things that you need to get right maybe you've been entangled Being trapped by that yoke of bondage once again. You need to get back into his word. You need to get back into prayer. You need to get back into God's family. Back into a local church. Being part of it. Because it will keep you accountable. So I'm going to give you time once again, amen, to pray those Saints of God that need to repent or whatever the case may be, ask God for guidance and direction. We'll give you this opportunity while we sing this song. Hallelujah.
begin to joke about something to be in awe of is that our Redeemer lives. That's one of the biggest difference, differences between true Christianity and other religions. Other religions are dead and dry. Other religions serve idols, serve statues. But true Christianity has an alive and well Savior. Somebody that can actually take action. A God that loves us so much that will step in when needed. That will guide us, that will protect us, that will fight for us most of all. So if you prayed, amen, you have that help once again. Because it's all about Jesus. He's our Savior. And that should be our focus. That will give us and make us better people. That will give us better lives. And you have nothing to fear. You have nothing to worry about. Because you trust in the Almighty God. Because you trust in God's given Son. Amen. Once again, this is the door. Church here on the north side of Oklahoma City. I want to thank you, amen, for tuning in. Hallelujah. Let's move forward in God. Hallelujah. also want to thank those that have been giving, amen, uh, through the different forms of giving. We're going to still take this city for Jesus Christ, amen, through whatever means, amen, through live stream, through sharing posts. Hallelujah. We're going to get the word of God out there, amen. So amen. also be praying for us, amen, as we're trying to do other things. And then we're also praying for you, amen. We miss everybody, but keep in the word of God, amen. Be encouraged. Be encouraged by these sermons. Be encouraged by these things. And here pretty soon we're going to be able to put them on YouTube so you can go back. Or share with friends and family members. Be like, man, you need to listen to the sermon. God is there for you. He can be your redeemer. Hallelujah. We're going to close in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and glory. Oh, Lord, for being alive, we thank you, Lord, for your blood, for your sacrifice. We thank you, Lord, for conquering death, hell, and the grave. And we are asking, my God, Lord, for, to help us, my God, to reach those that don't know about your love, that don't know about your sacrifice. We are asking, my God, for ways, my God, avenues, Lord, strategies into our city, my God, through the technology that you have placed before us. Lord, help us, my God, to continually put our focus upon you in our own personal lives. And we thank you, Lord. For all that you're doing, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen. Tune in once again, amen, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. We love you and we thank you. That's what you do.